Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the great pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. Boy, there are some big cards around the country uh, on this Saturday. Four Derby preps, big card at Santa Anita, big card at uh, at Gulfstream Park, and in New York, they got 15 horses entered in the Gotham. My goodness. I don't know if that's ever happened. Yeah, that's that's a nice thing there, Matt. 15 in the Gotham, 14 is the most that will run. So one of them's an AE. But, yeah, we have derby preps uh, throughout the country. Uh, uh, the uh, San Felipe out in California. The uh, Gotham, as you mentioned, in New York. The one we're going to focus on this week, though, is the Fountain of Youth. We're also going to look at the historic Big Cap, which uh, has a pretty nice uh, uh, betting field as well, I think. But let's start with the Fountain of Youth on the Kentucky Derby Trail. Matt, you ready? Ready, let's go. Let's do it. Here we go. The Fountain of Youth has, of course, attracted. Actually, before we show that, let's show this because that's our cover boy, Forte, Matt. The two-year-old champion, a very deserving two-year-old champion of 2022, Making his first start in a relatively difficult field here, a field of a 10, miles 16th, $400,000 grade two, Fountain of Youth at Gulfstream Park. We see Forte has drawn the four hall and should be a pretty big favor, but we're going to do the whole field, Matt. So let's start with the one, General Jim. General Jim, actually the third choice on the morning line for trainer Shug McGahee coming off a stakes win at Gulfstream Park. Yeah, interesting horse. Uh, I think a horse that Shug has liked uh, all along, um, a son of Into Mischief, uh, began, interestingly began his career on the turf, uh, winning a maiden special weight at Saratoga and an allowance race at Keeneland before moving to the dirt, which he did in the Mucho Macho Man at the beginning of January at Gulfstream Park, where he finished fourth. A tough trip in that race uh, to, through most of the st stretch. And then recently was the winner, an impressive winner, of the Swale Stakes going seven furlongs. I don't have any problems with this horse stretching out to the distance. No, not at all. He's been a mile and 16th before. As you said, in the Mucho Macho Man, uh, for good or for bad, because he drew the rail here in this 10-horse field, but he was just down on the rail, and there and there just was not a hole that opened up for him. I don't know that he was going to explode by to get the win in that mucho macho man, but uh, certainly an excuse there. And then when he dropped down to seven furlongs, he looked very good and running down a very fast horse in Super Chow last time in the Swale. General Jim, a very interesting horse, good on turf, good on dirt. I don't know if he's forte good. But a nice horse who can run on any surface. And no, certainly a mile 16th seems to be well within his scope. Number two, perhaps an interesting long shot. Legacy Isle, he gets blinkers off, Matt. He's shown plenty of speed in many of his races. Sometimes he's uh, been able to stalk the blinkers off. Makes me think maybe they'll try to take a, a little bit off that early speed. But I don't know. Uh, breaking from the two hole, if they want to do that. There is some speed in this race, but I could see him sticking around for a share. Yeah, an, an interesting horse, Brian. A horse that clearly likes Gulfstream Park. Won his first two races uh, at the Florida track. Was fourth in the Holy Bull most recently. Um, he ran in that Mucho Macho Man that we mentioned already. Uh, uh, actually crossed the finish line in first, but was disqualified and placed second. So... I don't know. It sounds like a pretty good set of past performances to me. Yeah. Yeah. And the Holy Bull last time he did back out a little bit, but uh, you know, as a son of Shackleford, if he gets the right trip with that speed, certainly a threat to uh, get a little brave down the stretch and he should be a pretty big long shot in here with that. Let's take a look at the early pace. I see a little bit more pace maybe than this time form us pace projectors letting on Matt. I guess some some of it depends on what Legacy Isle does. Uh, perhaps General Jim will be close. They have Forte not too far off. Uh, but uh, I think there's some horses on the outside that could show more speed than we see here. They have uh, uh, Legacy Isle sitting alone in second off of a horse we're going to talk about in a little bit, Mage. But uh, not a fast pace projected, but I could see a faster pace than this shows. 
Yeah, I agree with that. I think maybe this pace projector is a little bit, uh, uh, is obviously not just a little bit, is, is was very impressed with that uh, debut win by Mage. Yeah, we'll talk about him in a second. Let's get back to uh, the uh, uh, full field here. Shadow Dragon is, of course, a horse you'll see on the other end of the spectrum. He'll be back early, Matt. He's one of two for trainer Bill Mott, the, the, probably the lesser liked of the two Bill Mott horses. But after a disappointing stakes debut against New York Reds in the Sleepy Hollow, he came to run at Gulfstream Park last time with a strong second in the Holy Bowl. Yeah, absolutely. And that was a holy bull where Bill Mott uh, ran first and second. We'll talk more about that. Uh, also, yeah, second in the holy bull, only th beaten three quarters of a length. Uh, to me, this is a Bill Mott horse that is getting better and in uh, a limited number of starts. Yeah, yeah. That was his third lifetime start in the Holy Bowl, and it was a pretty good one. Next on the list, Matt, of course, is Forte. And Forte looked so good last year in winning three consecutive grade one races. He did it in slop. He did it where he had to battle down the stretch. He uh, stretched out for two turns at this mile, 16th distance, well, twice. And he was a decisive, clear-cut winner of the best field last year of all the juvenile races. So, Forte, as I said, a deserving Eclipse Award winner, a deserving champion. But he's been away. He's been away now for uh, four months. And uh, you never know uh, whether other horses uh, mature more during that time or, or if he doesn't come back at his best. Uh, there is reason to try to beat him. But on the other hand, on paper, if this Breeders' Cup Juvenile was – a month ago instead of four months ago and, and and not changing from two to three years old you'd have to say forte is a deserving big favorite in here deserving big favorite for sure absolutely the horse to beat um yeah the the only question is the return from the layoff but we're talking about todd pletcher and you know he's he's one of the best at bringing horses back at their uh top condition off of layoffs. The question is whether, you know, that is the intent of Pletcher in here. He's already got enough points to get into the Derby, I would say, Brian. So he could pick up another 20, 10, 15 uh, if he doesn't win. And who knows, you know, they may be bringing him in a little soft, looking at the, looking at the Florida Derby for the big win and then on to Kentucky. Yeah, yeah, this this is not the end goal for sure. Uh, of course, the Kentucky Derby is where Forte is expected to line up in uh, in a few months. But uh, this is uh, start number one. I guess I'm just looking at the odds, which could go down below even money, even here in the Fountain of Youth, as a uh, as a reason to try to beat Forte in his first start of the year. Number five is Il Miracola. Matt, he has not, after winning a maiden nicely at Gulfstream Park in his fourth try, I believe, he has not got it done in stakes. I, I find it pretty hard to recommend here. Yeah, I feel the same way. Uh, just has not moved on from that uh, uh, maiden win at Gulfstream. And the next horse on the list we certainly need to talk about, Blazing Sevens. Uh, Blazing Sevens, you see on the Timeform U.S. Pace Projector here, will probably be a little bit behind Forte. We'll see. Don't forget, Blazing Sevens did not get off to a good start in that big field in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. That might be an excuse for his fourth place finish. Uh, two things, Matt. He wasn't as good as Forte last year. Forte beat him twice, both at Saratoga Sprinting and Keeneland in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. But on the other hand, he still might have been one of the better two-year-olds in the country last year. Yeah, that's for sure. I mean, a lot of the things that we said about Forte, I feel that we can say about uh, – Blazing Sevens. He's got a really nice grade one win, as you mentioned, in the Champagne. Uh, got off to a really bad start in the Breeders' Cup. And, and taking that into consideration in that big field, of that fourth place finish um, uh, in the World Championships was not a bad race at all. Uh, again, coming back from uh, the four-month layoff, but for a trainer, Chad Brown, who is, who is just as good or maybe even better than uh, Pletcher with bringing horses back from long layoffs. He's got 16 derby points in the bank already. 
you know, I don't know if it's urgent for him to uh, win this race if we assume that he's going to move on from that into a hundred pointer next month. Yeah, and an interesting horse. I, I I kind of liken him. I guess you did too to Forte in in running style and and, and Grade One uh, experience. And and he was a very good two year old. He's in very good hands. You made a good point about Pletcher being good bringing horses back after a layoff and maybe chad brown is even better like you said so blazing sevens perhaps if he's matured a little bit more than forte in the in the four months since we saw him in the breeders cup uh blazing sevens is a horse who has a shot to turn the table certainly a classy two-year-old and reason to believe he'll be a good three-year-old number seven uh people are talking about number seven a little bit he brings in the the Taiba factor, if you will, trying to win a pretty big Kentucky Derby prep. It's not a grade one, but it could be a grade one with this field. Mage, a son of good magic for Gustavo Delgado, who's not uh, who, who's not a stranger to winning some big races. This horse showed a lot of speed in his debut, Matt, and he looked good all the way around. He did, and it was going seven furlongs, Brian. So, uh, uh, you know, a nice middle distance move there. It's tough to make that jump from uh, uh, the maiden special weight to the Kentucky Derby Trail and in the Fountain of Youth, finding one of the stronger fields that we've seen in a derby prep thus far this year. Yeah, it, 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 was, uh, it was a very good debut. He looks like he could be a very good horse, but I said it before Taiba ran in the Santa Anita Derby and, and I proved to be dead wrong. It's really, really hard to win a race like this off of only one sprint. But uh, as you can see, Timeform US, the pace projector says he will be the horse on the lead and clearly on the lead. I I want to see it before I believe it, but uh, certainly an interesting horse making his second lifetime start. Next on our list, Matt, is Rocket Can. And Rocket Can was a, a pretty good winner. Uh, holding off his stable mate pretty strongly in the Holy Bull. His stable mate, of course, we already talked about Shadow Dragon. So Rocket Can is the other Bill Mott. And Rocket Can's another horse who doesn't have a lot of speed. But it strikes me that he's uh, been good since he uh, uh, turned to two turns three races ago. I thought his races at Churchill were good last fall. Uh, somewhat flattered when Confidence Game came, came back and won the Rebel last time. That was the only horse that's beaten him at two turns. And uh, his his move forward, his recent move forward over the track in the uh, in the Holy Bowl was very good. Yeah, I agree. And not only uh, a loss to uh, confidence game, but earlier on in his career, he lost to instant coffee and he lost to disarm, who was a very good uh, two year old for the Asmussen barn. So, you know, uh, all of his losses were in strong, strong fields, and then the breakthrough in the Holy Bull. Uh, you you got to consider this horse uh, uh, having a good chance to win another. I agree. I agree with that. Number nine, Cyclone Mischief, actually was the race favorite in the Holy Bull, and 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 I've heard that uh, he he had a little breathing problem during that race. Otherwise, his connections believe believe he would have fired. They bring them right back in the fountain of youth. I don't know if that's a good thing. You know, if they've got the breathing thing figured out, that's one thing. But it's tough to come quickly back after that bad performance. Still, I guess if he can show the kind of form he did two races back in winning an allowance race over a future graded stakes winner, Cyclone Mischief could be a long shot threat in here. Yeah, and and going from uh, being a six to five favorite in the Holy Bull to being as we have in our morning in the in the morning line double digits if you like cyclone mr then you're sure getting a better price now a much much better price here he'll be double digits for sure as well the 10 dangerous ride an experienced horse who looks cheaper but uh, both cyclone mischief and dangerous ride i think are threats to be out there uh, going after or getting real close to that early lead and making this a little bit harder for the speed horses. Yeah, I, you know, I, I, you would think that the these horses that have shown speed in the past are they're not going to let uh, Mage get away too far ahead. 
And if Mage does get too far ahead early, like maybe the time form U.S. pace projector is uh, is alluding to, he becomes a dangerous second time starter in this Fountain of Youth. An interesting field, a field of ten for the Grade Two Fountain of Youth Saturday. Very good card at Gulfstream Park. There's a very good card, Matt, as you mentioned at Santa Anita as well, including that San Felipe for Kentucky Derby hopefuls. But we're going to focus on the big one, if you will, the big cap, grade one, half a million dollars, an historic race won by so many great champions over the years. Matt, I don't know that there's any champions in this field, but I'll tell you what, 11 horses, lots of interesting horses, uh, not a bad betting race in the big cap. So let's take a look, Matt. At, at one point last year, uh, late last spring, there goes Harvard. Looked like he was becoming a very good thing for Mike McCarthy. He's only had two starts since. They've been pretty bad. But maybe the layoff between the starts and the fact that that was a turf mile last time was just to get him ready for this. Is there goes Harvard, a grade one winner at Santa Anita, at 10 furlongs, and threaten here? I, I, I guess, Brian, if he can get, get back to that form that you uh, mentioned where he won the Gold Cup last year going the 10 furlongs, and, and as you're handicapping this field, um, you're not going to find many horses who have a win at the 10 furlong distance. I think, Brian, there's only two horses that have won at a mile and a quarter, and there goes Harvard uh, is one of them. Yeah, but his last two races have been pretty bad. Yeah, although if we look at the turf race last time after a layoff as just a prep, something went wrong two races ago, perhaps he pops back at pretty big odds. So something to think about. However, as I'm looking at this field real quick, there goes Harvard has some speed, not a ton of speed, but has some speed. Parnelli has some speed. Newgrange has some speed. Stiletto. Boy. So the first four horses on this list, Matt, all have – not sprinter kind of speed, not speedball kind of speed, but they all like to be, and some of their best performances have been real close to that early pace. So if we pull up the time form U.S. pace projector, there it is. We see, and then some of the horses not even mentioned so far. Uh, uh, a lot of horses out there, you see that big red button. If you're watching, not listening, which says fast pace, fast pace at a mile and a quarter makes some bells go off for me. I don't know about you. Yeah, Brian, and, and you throw in what I was alluding to before about the 10 furlong distance and, and only two horses having a win at that distance and the others, at, you know, obviously there are not a lot of opportunities to run uh, this distance. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, looks like a strong pace before I saw this pace projector. That's how I handicapped it. Number two is Parnelli. A horse who has never broken through in a stakes races. He's had a lot of chances. He comes off a win. He does throw in some nice races here and there. I just don't know if I can buy Parnelli in this big cap. Yeah, that his last win in an allowance race was back almost a year ago in June. Now, uh, the three, Newgrange, is a horse that scares me, frankly. Uh, three graded stakes wins uh, in, in a career, I believe, that spanned – only eight races. You see on the pace projector, though, he is part of that pace again. So I wonder I wonder how these horses are going to fare. But New Grange certainly could be the most talented horse in this race. Yeah, Brian, uh, the recent winner of the San Pascal. But you go back. Um, he was an impressive horse on the Kentucky Derby Trail. He didn't make it to the uh, big race. But he won the Sham and the Southwest uh, at that point when he was running for Baffert. Yeah, so he switched from Baffert to D'Amato, Phil D'Amato last year, and uh, it looks like he's putting it together in the new barn after being, yeah, a nice three-year-old. I, I never thought those Sham and Southwest were uh, huge fields as far as who he beat, but uh, certainly a good three-year-old. Coming off of a very nice win, grade two San Pasqual last time. He won by a length. Never been farther than nine furlongs, though. So there are a few red flags that pop up for me with New Grinch, but certainly a danger in here. Stiletto Boy, Matt, often a bridesmaid, rarely the bride. Runs a lot of good races. Two straight years, he was third in the Pegasus World Cup with pretty big odds. Another horse, though, who seems to like, 
he he has come off it in races, but it seems like his best races are on or near the early lead. Yeah, and he just does not have the past performances that point him out to be a 10 furlong horse. But like you said, usually it runs a good race and uh, is close to the, you know, the exotics uh, at the end. Number five is Defunded. And as I look at the past performances, I can't help but think Defunded does uh, uh, stand out a little bit in this field in his recent performances. He showed flashes of talent early on for trainer Bob Baffert, but finally it seems like the light bulb has gone on. Uh, grade one winner of the awesome again over this track three starts ago. Then he went to Del Mar and won easily in the native diver. Then he went cross country and ran a good race uh, close to the pace and, and stayed well to be second best in the Pegasus World Cup. To the funded's recent form, those last three races point him out as a deserving favorite in the big cap. Yeah, absolutely, Brian. Um, and looking at the uh, morning line odds that were that were just up there, uh, he, we have him as a three to one favorite. So a favorite, but not a big heavy favorite. It's Baffert, so you know could go uh, could go lower than that. I don't know. When I was looking at the field, uh, I had questions about the ten furlong distance for him. Yeah, he he does have some experience, and he's run decently well uh second uh going longer uh it seems like he's a better horse now but once again another horse who wants that early lead or wants to be right there so that's one of the reasons that you might play against the favorite in the big cap number six is an interesting horse to me Matt. if you remember last year's big cap warrant ran a big race a great stretch drive where he was uh, a dogged down the stretch and he got beat a short head last year going 10 furlongs over this track that's his only try at 10 furlongs, by the way. I, I have a feeling that the grandson of Tappet, a son of Constitution, uh, is a horse who likes a distance. I agree with you, Brian. And I don't know, for some reason, I feel like I'm remembering back to last year and Warrant may have been my top pick in the big cap. Uh, certainly uh, a winner of a couple of mid-major derbies as a three-year-old, the Oklahoma Derby, the Texas Derby, uh, coming back for Brad Cox. And he came back with a very nice allowance win at fairgrounds after a six-month layoff. Yeah, and you, you could say he didn't win a race last year, and that's fair enough because he didn't. But all of those performances, even the losses after the Santa Anita Handicap, were good races. But his best race was this race last year comes off that fairgrounds prep i think he's a horse ready to uh, ready to come in with another good performance nothing wrong with uh, a brad cox shipping a horse hit number seven is haywood speech matt haywood speech looks like a 12 furlong horse to me in races shorter than 12 furlongs against good horses he has not impressed yeah <laughs> we talked about horses not good getting the uh mile and a quarter distance uh haywood's beach uh loves the long long distances and has some nice wins going a mile and a half uh, a couple of grade threes uh recently and i agree it's kind of weird to say that uh mile and a quarter might be might not be his distance but because it's too short too short uh also you get tougher fields when you go nine or ten furlongs in these graded stakes than you do in those mile and a half races. It seems like those mile and a half races are kind of secondary in American racing. Haywood's Beach has been good at it. But if you're looking for a long shot and if there is a hot pace, maybe Haywood's Beach can come running down the stretch and pass tired horses. A horse who won't be tiring passing, uh, won't be passing tiring horses is number eight, Hopper. Hopper has a lot of potential, Matt. Uh, very lightly raced, but uh, could be an impressive horse. Looks like a speed horse to me, though. Yeah, it's a four-year-old with only four starts. Uh, was second in the uh, San Pascal after a six-month layoff, and in the past won the grade three affirmed. Yeah, he won that affirmed impressively. He won two in a row, in fact, impressively after getting to dirt in his second and third start. San Pascual was not a bad performance. Uh, if you like New Grange, uh, Hopper was uh, not far back after setting the pace there and, and probably needed the race, needed the experience. So a talented horse, 
as you can tell, though, I'm just not really on the speed in this race. Number nine, Scarlet Fusion, another horse who might want to run longer. I don't know, a little, little cheaper. I couldn't completely exclude him from, from running third or fourth, but even that seems like a stretch. Yeah, for uh, for Joe Sharp, who sometimes can sneak in uh, a price horse prepped for this race with a win on the turf in the J.B. Conley and uh, also finished third in the Tinsel uh, on the main track at Oaklawn Park. And as I recall, I think that was a decent field in that race. Yeah, and, and his last two wins are a mile and a half. So a lot of what we said about Haywood Speech, who's even more proven at a mile and a half, goes true for Scarlet Fusion as well. Tis Quantum, uh, recent form is good, but we have no idea whether he can handle a grade one field like this. Yeah, I agree, Brian. And number 11, we have to talk about Proxy. Proxy was a disappointment in my eyes last time in the Pegasus World Cup. Uh, he passed tired horses truly. That's all he did in the Pegasus World Cup to get fifth. That was a disappointment after coming off a grade one win at Churchill Downs last fall in the Clark. Uh, however, if we're talking about this fast pace that we all seem to agree, including Time Form US, uh, perhaps Proxy is a horse who could be picking up pieces and uh, coming uh, coming west for the first time, definitely a dangerous shiver. Yeah, and keeping in mind that that uh, fifth in the Pegasus came after a three-month layoff, um, so maybe he needed to race a little bit. He should be a lot tighter for this start, and he also finished third uh, in the Stephen Foster at Churchill Downs, too. Yeah, he's run a lot of good races, a lot of non-winning good races before finally breaking through in the Clark. If you like Proxy, I think it's because you think he can, that California horses aren't great and he can rally in here. Although, if we look at the Santa Anita track trends, this is a pretty small sample. It's the last 34 races going two turns at Santa Anita. And you see that the average number of runners in those races, Matt, was only just over six. But you do see a trend here as far as closers being able to win. Doesn't look so likely. Six percent if you're over four lengths behind and then post position you, you it seems like you have the advantage if you're on the inside again a small sample different kind of races than this mile and a quarter Santa Anita handicap but uh, there are some trends recently at Santa Anita yeah and uh, uh you know but it says closers four plus lengths you know going this distance and and with speed in there I think some of the closers are going to be a lot farther behind than four lengths. Yeah. So my handicapping of the races, folks, goes against the recent trends at Santa Anita. So might be a, a reason to disagree with me. But again, I think this is a different kind of race here, a mile and a quarter with a lot of speed. We shall see. But more importantly, we shall see top picks right now. Matt, I'm going to let you start. We started with the Fountain of Youth. Let's get to it. Who's your top pick in the FO? Why? Brian, I, I am going to go long shot hunting in the Fountain of Youth. Probably not a good idea. Um, are both Forte and Blazing uh, Sevens going to need a race? Are both of them not going to come back sharp enough to win in this spot? I don't know, but I'm going to take a shot. And I'm going to take a shot with Shadow Dragon, that other Bill Mott that we Whoa. talked about. Whoa. That, uh, that ran that that ran a uh, pretty noteworthy second place in the in the Holy Bull behind his stable little mate Rocket Can. I have a feeling that this is a Bill Mott horse that is going to benefit a great deal from that holy ball. I like it, Matt. Uh, double digit dodge. Yeah, I, I think you're sure to get that here in the Fountain of Youth with Shadow Dragon, who ran a very good race. Behind the horse, who I'm picking, Rocket Can. They ran one, two in the holy ball. So Matt and I have the same idea here. Listen, I think Forte's going to win this race. I really do. I think the uh, uh, likelihood of Forte winning are pretty uh, of winning is pretty good. I think he's the best horse in the race and I, I think there's a good chance that he wins this Fountain of Youth. However, my guess is 
you're going to get seven to ten, four to five odds on Forte making his first start as a three-year-old, making his first start in four starts against a pretty good field. So I think there's some pace in here. I think Rocky Can has more early speed than Matt's top pick, his stablemate Shadow Dragon. I think he's getting better. You can see it from race to race. He really likes two turns. I'm going to go with Rocky Can. Not not as big a long shot as Matt's pick, but I think Rocky Can could double dip here and get another one while the getting's good with a returning Forte and a returning Blazing seven. Matt in the Santa Anita handicap. We also are not picking the favorite there as well. Why do you pick? Uh, why do you like New Grange as your top pick? I like New Grange because I think, uh, as we talked about in the rundown, that New Grange is a talented horse. He was a talented three-year-old. I think that he is, uh, you know, in good form and is going to run a big race um, after that second in the San Pascal. Uh, after that win in the San Pasquale. Yeah, uh, New, New Grange is a horse that um, is dangerous. He's got some talent, but he's a horse I really decided I didn't like here. And, and it's because of a strong pace going a mile and a quarter. He's never been farther than nine. So I'm going to have to disagree with Matt on this one, folks. I, I hate to disagree with my buddy, Matt, but New Grange is not for me. I want a horse who can run 10 furlongs. I want a horse who can come from a little bit off the pace. And that's Warren and Warren has proven it over the track at this distance. I think he wants 10 furlongs. Got a prep. I'm going to go warrant as probably no better than the third choice as he returns to the site of probably his best career race. All right, folks, that's our top picks. Before we let you go, Matt, can I get a parting shot from you there in New Jersey? Absolutely. Hey, enjoy your race and pick your spots. There's so many, uh, so many really good betting races, uh, with big fields all around the country, it seems like with the move to the 50 point and down uh, being offered in these uh, Kentucky Derby preps have opened the floodgates with big fields all around the country. Absolutely. Good point. A, a lot of good races there. I, I want to see a manual and I had him at Tampa Bay uh, uh, coming back. You won't get those six to one odds. That's when he won at Tampa Bay again, probably. But I think he's going to prove to be a really top turf horse. So he's running on that Gulfstream Park undercard as well as the Devona Dale. So many good races, as Matt said. Kentucky Derby preps, it's going to be big. Folks, thanks for watching every week. We sure do appreciate it. If you haven't yet hit, hit that subscribe button, do it for us now. We appreciate it as we appreciate the great Candace Curtis in the Louisville home office for the race graphics. Derby Wars. The best contest site out there, our sponsor, and those pace projections we get from Time Form US. Folks, have a great week. Good luck with all, all these big races. I'm sure you're going to hit some winners. Make them big. We'll see you again next week right here on Horse Center.